All right, so we're doing the watercolour whales in this particular piece and we're going to do the whale part quite slowly uh, for the benefit of the video and then we're going to speed it up and time lapse the rest of it <clears throat> as you copy the technique as you go along. So basically we're doing a combination of wet on wet and um, wet on dry. So wet on wet refers to creating a puddle of water more or less on your painting and adding uh, watercolour paint to it or pigment to it. Uh, wet on dry is as it sounds. So the paper is dry and you're painting wet paint onto it. So the particular pack that you've got in front of you is either an A4 or an A3 version of this painting and it's had the scoring of the shape that you're going to be painting scored into the surface of it. So whilst you can't see it on the video up close and you'll see it at the end, uh, the picture of the whale has been scored into the paper so you know where you're putting the paint. Now essentially for this whale, what you're doing is you're choosing one colour and you're either going to paint uh, all, all of the sections in with uh, just water or you're going to come back in and do the wet on dry technique. Either way, it doesn't really matter whichever you're more comfortable with. Uh, but if it is the wet on wet technique, you will basically go in and block in with water first, the entire shape that you're about to paint, and then go back and bring in the pigment um, and paint the pigment onto that block of water to spread it out. Um, if you're doing wet on dry, you're literally going to uh, just paint it and block it in as you go. Uh, and essentially the process that you'll follow is each section of the painting, you will block it in with colour and then once it's dry, you'll return with a little bit more colour and just outline it uh, using the same colour that you use to block it in. Because you're outlining, the colour will be more condensed on the end of your brush and it will result in a thicker and darker line, uh, which will go, grab the depth and create the depth in your painting. So you'll start with the whale, or I start with the whale almost every time because it's a nice big block of color and it's easy to do. Uh, and once you've got your technique that you've chosen to go ahead with down, you can then just go straight on to the rest of the painting. So we're using metallic paints and the paints that come in the kit are metallic paints also. Um, they don't have a lot of uh, depth to the amount of paint uh, in the palette, that's completely normal. That's what they look like when they come out of the store. The store. Uh, it has a brush in your kit as well, so you'll be using that. Um, and the best way I find to use watercolor is to use plenty of water. Uh, it really does help spread the pigment around. When you first apply metallic watercolor paint, it doesn't look like metallic watercolor paint, not unless you're under a really bright light. It just looks like normal paint. And then as the water evaporates off, it leaves the mica powder pigment behind, and that's how you get the sparkle. So you can see me working on the whale here, just gently blocking it in nice and slowly, working my way through it. And you'll just continue to do that in the colors all throughout the painting as you go. So again, this is called the wet on wet technique. Uh, when you're, you know, color, covering it in water and then coming back with the pigment. And it's called the wet on dry technique if you're just applying the paint direct to the, uh, the paper. So I tend to do the wet on wet technique for the body of the whale, so most of him. Uh, and then I tend to move on to the dry on, uh, wet on dry technique uh, for more or less for the most of the rest of the painting. And I really do that uh, just for control. So when you're working on such a big part of the whale, it's really easy to block it in with water first uh, and then add your pigment. And it's a bit easier to come back and do it that way. But when you're working on smaller amounts, sometimes having too much water on your brush can be a bit distracting uh, and it's easy to make a mistake. So I tend to go the wet on dry technique for that. So you can see me coming back through now on this painting after I've done the, the first lot of blocking in. It's pretty quick to dry. So I'm just going around and adding some depth of color around the edges. So it's up to you as to how much you do. You can either uh, just do a really thin line around the edges or you can do what I'm doing there and just um, come in about, you know, about a centimeter from the edge uh, and just make it darker around there. It just gives it a bit more depth. Um, I actually come back again later on and do the thin lines as well. So once it's dried a little bit and the, the paint isn't going to bleed into um, the bodies of paint that sit right next to it, I come back uh, with a really thin line uh, and lots of pigment on my brush and just outline it as well for the whale um, and for some parts on the painting as well. So mostly the parts that I do outline are the parts where there's two colours pressed up against each other. So you'll notice when we get to the time lapse where you're watching the uh, leaves be, uh, sorry, I call them leaves, but they're not the the spray coming up from the whale uh, peeling off. Those have two bodies of colour sitting next to them. I've chosen to use two different colours. So for those ones, I've let them dry and I've come back with the thin brush and also touched those ones up too. Uh, but that's basically the process you follow. So um, yeah. 
So as uh, the painting goes along, what I might do is just talk a little bit about um, the watercolour. So this watercolour paint that we are using is uh, produced by Montmartre, which is an Aussie brand. Uh, it's a pretty great little watercolour uh, palette. Uh, when it arrives, it does look like it's um, half empty, but it's not. It's just because of the process that you use to create this particular paint. Um, it agitates really well, so when you get the water in there, it's, uh, you know, and you mix it all up, you do get a pretty strong pigment. Um, it's certainly not as strong as some of the more expensive paints that I've used, uh, but it's really effective for this sort of whimsy look that we're going for, particularly with um, the mica. So there's, it's a 17-piece set. Um, so 16 colours uh, and a brush that come in this particular pack. Um, and there are enough colours there that you can you can play and you use so very little when you're doing this particular piece that there's plenty left over to keep afterwards. Um, the way that they make these ones, aside from uh, water and pigment, there's a few other things like gum added into it uh, and then the mica powders to make it really sparkly. So as you're using this, you will find that your water becomes quite a beautiful sparkly uh, mix. Uh, it's really pretty to look at. So uh, basic things with watercolour, you can also, like if you're, you've used watercolour before or you've done the little exercises that come on the sheet that come out, uh, you may have experimented with uh, variegated colours. And that is to say that um, adding one, one colour at one end of your piece and then adding another colour to it so it sort of goes from one to the other as, uh, as you work on it. That can be quite effective, particularly on the little flowers and leaves we've got in this particular piece. Um, I haven't done it in this video. I've just done per the pack. Uh, however, you definitely can use that, what you've learnt in the exercises beforehand and apply it to this. Uh, it does look quite effective, very cute. Uh, with this particular one, we've used a Cricut machine to score the image uh, that we've created on Illustrator into the surface. So this one was created uh, at our home and then we have printed them off using watercolour paper. So the paper that is in the video in front of me is just a cheap paper. Uh, the paper that we, that gets sent out in the packs is a 300 um I think it's a 300 gram, it is 300 gram uh, watercolour paper. It's a German watercolour paper. Uh, it's very, very thick and it's quite beautiful to work on. Yeah, 300 GSM it is. Uh, and it's a premium watercolour paper. So we run that through the Cricut with our design on it um, and then it makes it nice and easy for anyone to follow along and create their design. So as you can see in the video here, the watercolour, uh, the whale is just about blocked in and I'm going around adding that depth of colour all the way around it touching up as I said uh, and this is the process that I will continue to follow as we move on into the time lapse shortly where you can see me uh, basically working my way through the painting so as you can see there I'm turning the page as I go I do find it easier to be able to do that um, firstly because you're not putting your hand on wet parts of your painting and smudging it um, but I like to separate my colors out and work in one color at a time uh, spreading it kind of evenly across the page so it you know, aesthetically comes together quite beautifully. So you can see me working on it. Um, this one was really easy. It probably took me half an hour in total to do this painting from start to end. So I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, we'd love to see your paintings. Thanks guys, bye.